红色，是表示你的专注力显示的很高。Teachers at this primary school in China. 蓝色是走神了。Know exactly when someone isn't paying attention. 白色就是你可能跟网络还没有连接好。These headbands measure each student's level of concentration. The information is then directly sent to the teacher's computer and to parents. China has big plans to become a global leader in artificial intelligence. It has enabled a cashless economy where people make purchases with their faces. A giant network of surveillance cameras with facial recognition helps police monitor citizens. Meanwhile, some schools offer glimpses of what the future of high-tech education in the country might look like. Classrooms have robots that analyze students' health and engagement levels. Students wear uniforms with chips that track their locations. There are even surveillance cameras that monitor how often students check their phones or yawn during classes. These gadgets have alarmed Chinese netizens. But schools say it wasn't hard for them getting parental consent to enroll kids into what is one of the world's largest experiments in AI education. A program that's supposed to boost students' grades while also feeding powerful algorithms. 为了就是国家的这个研究呀、发展呀，我觉得是没有问题的。The government has poured billions of dollars into the project, bringing together tech giants, startups, and schools. We got exclusive access to a primary school a few hours outside of Shanghai. See firsthand how AI tech is being used in the classroom. For this fifth grade class, the day begins with putting on a brain wave sensing gadget. Students then practice meditating. The device is made in China and has three electrodes: two behind the ears and one on the forehead. These sensors pick up electrical signals sent by neurons in the brain. The neural data is then sent in real time to the teacher's computer. So while students are solving math problems, a teacher can quickly find out who's paying attention and who's not. A report is then generated that shows how well the class was paying attention. It even details each student's concentration level at 10-minute intervals. It's then sent to a chat group for parents. 就是他可以看，看到每个人的评分。The reports are detailed, but whether these devices really work and what they exactly measure isn't as clear. We were curious if the headbands could actually measure concentration, so one of our reporters tried on the device. This is a new technology with still fairly little research behind it. Theodore Zanto is a neuroscientist at the University of California, San Francisco. He was surprised to learn that this tech, called electroencephalography, also known as EEG, is being used in the classroom on children. It's usually used by doctors in hospitals and labs. EEG is very susceptible to artifacts, and so if you are itching or just a little fidgety, or the EEG wasn't set up properly so that the electrodes didn't have a good contact, affects the signal. Despite the chances for false readings, teachers told us the headbands have forced students to become more disciplined. 上课回答我的问题，就是他们的声音会比平常更响亮。Teachers say the students now pay better attention during class, and that has made them study harder and achieve higher scores. 上课认真听讲，作业做的基本上是全对的。But not all students are as enthusiastic. This fifth grader, whom we caught dozing off in class, told us his parents punish him for low attention scores, and that kind of data adds a new kind of pressure for students. 想啊，如果在一次考试，全班人都考了九十五分以上，就你考了一个八十五，你会你会不会感觉你有一种嗯
Companies we interviewed said the data can go to government-funded research projects. We spoke to parents who were unclear about where the data ended up, and they didn't seem to care too much. Santos says there's likely no privacy protection at all. In a classroom, if you're trying to make an assessment of an individual student, you really can't anonymize it. Experts and citizens alike are sounding alarms about various aspects of the country's huge push into artificial intelligence. These classrooms are laboratories for future generations. And while the